Maybe you're asking yourself, should I try and build my own FPV drone to save a couple bucks? And you're like, Adam, tell me the answer. And I'm like, no, the answer is no. You should not try to build your own FPV drone to save a couple bucks because you won't. So that that's all. If that's all you wanted to know, that's that's you can leave now. But if you love me, you'll leave the video playing so it'll help my analytics and stuff. But in this video, I want to explain why you would want to build your own drone and why you might not want. To, I already told you that, but why you want to build your own drone. We're going to get in. There's two big reasons, two main reasons, really. And we're going to get into that right after I tell you that this video is sponsored by none other than PCBWay. PCBWay makes custom printed circuit boards. That's what PCB stands for. And they have thousands to choose from. Many different types of board materials, even flexible circuit boards, and thousands of components that you can put on your board. They even have a service where they will put the components on the board for you so it's ready to beep and bop and boop when it comes to your door. If circuit boards aren't your thing, they also offer rapid prototyping services to include sheet metal bending, CNC machining, injection molding and 3d printing in various types of materials so if you're working on a project and you need a prototype made up and maybe you don't have the materials or the tools to do that check out pcbway.com I'll have a link to them down in the description of this video if you're interested there'll be like I think a five dollar uh, coupon for you check it out no pressure though just if you want to let's get back to the video first of all the reason why you're not going to save money most of the time trying to build your own FPV drone is because FPV drones now are relatively mass produced. I say relatively because it's still a niche market, but for what it is, there are so many models out there and they're just slapping them together and the manufacturers are just throwing them out the door. And in this case, let's say a five inch FPV drone, this one doesn't have propellers on it, but that propellers would be five inches in diameter. But it's so cheap for them to put all the parts together and put it on a drone and sell it to you already made. So here are the two big reasons why you might want to build your own drone. One is going to be for the experience. So if you like to tinker and you like to um, build things and build electronics and flying things, then you will enjoy the experience. So the experience of that and the uh, educational aspect of that, of learning how to build your own flying robot, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the other big reason is going to be customization. So if you know exactly what you want, or maybe you don't, but you want to test something out, you can do that. Uh, maybe, maybe you got, I don't know, maybe you got a good, great deal on some motors or something. So you were able to like get some of some of the parts for cheap, and then you want to just buy the rest of the parts and slap them together. Um, that could be a good reason. Um, and you know, eventually you kind of will need to learn how to build a drone, even if you don't build it from scratch, just in terms of repairing the drone and all of that. So that's a big aspect as well as if you build it, you can repair it. That's kind of the idea when it comes to FPV drones in this whole, you know, RC FPV community. So those are the two big reasons. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, honestly, uh, I mean, I, I build a lot of my own drones partially for fun, partially for customization, but honestly, a lot of the drones out there, the FPV drones that are pre-built, they would do the job just fine. I mean, I'm actually looking at some different ones. I think I was thinking about the uh, the Sector 5, HGLRC Sector 5. They just came out with that because I had been using one of their frames and I liked it quite a bit. So I might check that out. Um, usually it's the motors is, is kind of the, the biggest factor in terms of like how the quad feels. So not so much in terms of, you know, the flight controller or the ESC stack, the motors and the propellers are gonna make the biggest difference. Now, I'm just going to say some ballpark numbers and I'll put some more concrete numbers up on the screen, screenshots from uh, like GetFPV and places like that. But, but generally, I mean, you're looking for a, an FPV freestyle type of drone and what that means is it has a frame that can carry a GoPro as opposed to a strictly racing style where you're not going to have a GoPro because it's very common, very popular to carry an action camera. For that type, for this type of drone, you're looking at right around th like three to five hundred dollars. So it depends on whether you want to go with uh, like a DJI digital FPV system, which is going to be the most expensive uh, digital system, versus the cheapest. FPV system, which is going to be analog, which is uh, very old. It's been around for a long time. I mean, ever since 
people were doing FPV. That's it's been around. Um, it's very cheap. It's very lightweight. The quality is not as good. And technically speaking, um, you do need to have like a uh, ham radio operators license to use that, um, technically speaking. <clears throat> but so those are kind of your two options. You know, you can get a five inch FPV drone pre-built with analog right around $300 mark, like good, you know, good quality, um, right around $300. And then it's going to add about $150 to go to that, uh, DJI digital FPV system. Now, keep in mind that I'm just talking about the drone here. Um, you would have the goggles to think about. The, so the FPV goggles, they need to match whatever FPV system you're using. So if you're using DJI digital, you need to have the DJI goggles. If you're using analog, you can use any, any brand of analog goggles. So that's something to keep in mind in terms of the overall cost of getting into it. And then you're going to have your transmitter, your radio. Um, but that's, that's not, I mean, that's, you know, separate, like you just buy that once, but in terms of the drone, you're going to buy a receiver for each drone. So that's going to go into the fa in factor into building the drone itself. Really what it comes down to is, do you want to build? Do you like to build more than fly? Or do you like to fly more than build? I know some people like to build more than they do like to actually fly. But I'll tell you this, if you're getting into FPV for the first time and you're like, oh, I got to build my own FPV drone so that I can, you know, fly my drone and fix it. I would say, don't do that. Don't try to build your, your drone and then fly it if it's your first one, um, because just the whole building and getting it to fly right, it's like a big process. And then so you might, it might fly weird and you're like, I don't know, is this normal? Or did I mess something up when I was building it? So that's why I would suggest buy a ready-made one and if it's your very first one, I wouldn't recommend getting a five inch FPV drone, uh, like a freestyle FPV drone. I would get a little trainer, like a, like the uh, Emax Tiny Hawk or the, um, what do they call that? The Tiny Trainer or something, um, or w something like that, a little micro that you could use. And that's a great way to get into FPV, but that's kind of a topic for another video. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, comments about this, about building your own FPV drone, that's what we do here at RC with Adam. So leave them down below. Thanks everybody. Have a great day and I will see you again very soon. I mean, we get bars in our goggles.